The concept of swing planes, like I said, has been around for a long time, and they've taken on so many different various versions. Modern day, it's moved to more scientific looks at it, like the vertical swing plane on, on a radar machine. One item that I feel will really finally button up the way that the golf industry looks at a swing plane is one of our elements that we're going to share here today called the relative swing plane. Now, what does that mean? Well, it has a bunch of deep-rooted meanings that there's a 360-degree uh, element to this, but let's start with the first simple concept today. One of the most popular things, and we've been discussing it on our group uh, on Facebook, Postmodern Golf, uh, feel free to join us on Facebook, is golfers have always been so concerned about coming over the top and slicing and things like that have always been one of the big discussion pieces of of golf and everyone is enamored with the notion of laying the club down or getting that flattish look on the downswing so let's use one of our new elements the relative swing plane to discuss so we're going to look at just one little tiny piece of this now i chose someone who makes quite a flat transition. And what I mean by that is this golfer I chose as a, an example because I've worked with so many people this year and focused on this particular area that this would be a good sample for you to see what the correction had to be made as time went on. But red is the center of the grip, which we call the hub path, the culmination of everything you do to the club. So there's the red hub path. And green is the path of the club head. And what you're going to notice is the way that the center of your hands move, the hub, moves on a different angle than the path of the club head. So the club shafts would be somewhere in between here, and we would have a relative angle between these two. Now there's more to the relative angle than just this one perspective. But let's just start with this. We'll take it one step at a time. Now this golfer in their transition was intentionally trying to move their hands in such a way that they would flatten the club even more in an attempt to try to really get this type of look. Um, the lay down type feel, this is just a student of mine who I just <laughs> took a picture and photoshopped in some hands, is as they're bringing the hands down and out, to try to make the club try to trail behind and lay down. So that's that's the concept. So this type of motion, I'm just going to get rid of this one. This type of motion creates a shape of the hub that produces a center of curvature like this. So what do I mean by that? Now we're getting into other stuff and it sounds crazy. Quick explanation. The curve of your hub path, so how your hub path is curving, the center of that is represented by these white dots. So the path of these white dots gives us an idea of how it's curving. Now, the golfer, this is from the target. So here's the hub path. The club head is over here. You can see I chose the same swing. So you can see. And the hub is coming this way. And the club is back here and the shaft is this way. So the hands are curving around something that's out of the plane. That's way out this way of the hub path. The correction I have to make then is to move this path of curvature more inside the plane of the hub. So the way that the hands are trying to be taken down and out and the way that they're curving is making an obscene three-dimensional shape of the center of curvature. So this is how we use the center of curvature kinematically to help describe exactly what we're seeing. So. A lot of people talk talk about torque and force and are you torquing here or are you not torquing here? Well, our convention also includes the shape of the hub path. It's totally intertwined 
into these relative angles and how the golfer can put their kinetics into the club. So when you see this type of center of curvature, we know that the golfer is curving their hands down and out. And that action is taking place early in the downswing here, as we can see. So when we look at our parameter, the element, the relative angle, and we look at this center of curvature, we know that the effort and the way that the golfer is accelerating their hub path is starting to tilt more and more this way. And I could spin this parameter around and you could see it's going out that way. So this is such an important part of the swing, folks, because the club doesn't have much velocity at all here. So what you do to it really it's really going to influence what happens so the relative angle here between the club head and the hub is super important and so much about planes and stuff has always been centered on the club shaft so in our relative swing plane angle which is a term we trademarked and and is our ownership is to do with the hub and the club head now You'll notice that if you look at the overall shape of the green and you look at that relative to the horizon, this is another area we could use the relative swing plane, and we look at the ground, you could look at how the path of the green moves and what that angle is to the ground and the path of the red and how that moves and the angle to the ground. So you can see an angle difference between the hub and the club head. And it's more pronounced on an iron than with a driver. Nothing to do with the lie angle, in our opinion. Well, something a little to do with the lie angle, but more about the length of club. Because we know today that driver lie angles are getting close to 60 degrees, and a sand wedge standard is 64 degrees. So lie angles are moving towards this 60 degree area, yet when you look at the so-called vertical swing plane on your radar device, or if you're taking a lesson and you're hitting on radar, this green club head usually is 48 degrees relative to the ground so that means that the relative angle of the club head to the ground is flatter than the actual lie of the club and in our uh, results and our conclusions come that's from the length of the club and that will be in our published paper on the difference between driver and iron swings of four tour players so when we look at relative angle Another reason I use this particular subject is we would like to see a point where the club head crosses over on the other side of the hub path. And you can see that this golfer who has a path issue and ball flight issue and really had his worst year of golf in a long time from that action of trying to lay it down, the club head relative angle barely if anything made it on it tipped on the other side of the hub path as we can see here if we catch the right plane you can see the path of the club head relative to the hub path never really crossed over they came close but never really crossed over this golfer usually will have a big swivel or a wrist roll which you can see present right there in the shape of the hub path uh, post impact this little strange Rocky Mountain shape uh, rooster comes from rollover and that's two little tiny snippets of the relative swing plane concept uh, there is much more and that will soon to be out so hope you enjoyed stage one of our new parameter new element the relative swing plane angle